The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Our top stories this week. It's still the wall of science for the month of February, but I figured at least we could have a nice New Mexico sunset picture <laughs> with the graphics. Uh, I'm I'm working on it. Uh, uh, I'm working on bonds. They're wiggling. And that's <laughs> that story. Uh, what I'm also going to talk about today and try to do a demo is uh, the development of the intertile sequencing story. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago we saw this simulation of a simulation, you know, just running on one conventional computer of all the different tiles as they were trying to talk to each other and so forth. That got me part way there. And then last week uh, I had this thing, Channel Sim, which was another just a simulation just running on a computer written in Perl, high level programming language, to try to deal with not just having them connect, but having them connect and being running different possible versions of MFZ, different laws of physics. So the connections are going to have to handle the fact that uh, the adjacent tiles might be talking different laws of physics and we really need to not let them speak to each other if that's the case. So this week I took that simulation uh, uh, and carried it over uh, to uh, the tile. So I made some to do for myself. This is on Saturday and Sunday uh, uh, to to use that Perl code that I wrote to sort of sort things out with the levels and how we're always falling to level one where we touch each other and then we're trying to fall to level two where we have, well, level zero and then level one where we have compatible uh, laws of physics so that we can open up the gate and let events start happening. And that's really where the simulator MFMS begins. You know, it kind of pretends it has separate tiles and it's true that they're implemented with different threads and they run in parallel and so forth, but the MFMS code, the initialization code, has no way of handling the idea of an act a tile actually just sort of crashing and rebooting after it's been going for a while. MFMS can't simulate that. And the idea of having tiles that are running different uh, sets of physics, MFMS can't simulate that either. Uh, so all of this stuff, this front end stuff, before we can get to the point where we can do the events and run Ulam and Splat and so forth, that stuff has to be worked out and that's what's been happening now. So the idea was to take the simulation from last week and actually try to make a version of it that was on the tiles now, where instead of having two simulated tiles with a simulated connection in between them, we'd use two physical tiles with an actual connection in between them and just try to get that basic stuff going of saying, are we on the same level? Can we both talk? What are you running? What am I running? And so forth. Demo first cut on tile level simulator, uh, level sequencer, no display hacking allowed. That was my ground <laughs> rules because it wasted an incredible amount of time and and I worked at it and you know <clears throat> the way the way I write draft code I'm not sure if everybody works this way I mean I'm you're supposed to have specs and everything like that but when you know what you want to do roughly and you need to start fleshing it out what I always do is I sort of start from the top down and I run write the top level thing and then I say uh, if you get here fail because you have incomplete code <laughs> and then I run it and so I got it to compile and then I run it and and I got uh, uh, incomplete code and that's big success and then you go back to wherever it was I do these bike drivers seem to this is actually a different one than we saw in the picture. It's a little bit late. And then you write some more code. And now it fails at ITC CPP line 21. And uh, and then ITC line 27, because we're making progress. So you go back, you, you get rid of the call on the fail, you write some code there that leads to something else, and then you fail there, and so forth. M you know, MFM IO CPP it fails at, and <clears throat> eventually it got, oh yeah, well now this is a case, so all of those cases of failing with incomplete code, as far as I'm concerned in my development process, that's success. That means we're making progress, right, because we decide we're going to develop this little bit of code, then we need to have that thing, and when we 
hit that, now we know. We're right in the moment where we need it, and then we go write it. This, program received signal, sig sev, segmentation fault, that's where I failed. That's where I lost the game. When I get coding complete, I won. When I got this, it meant I actually wrote a bug, so I got the simulator going and figured it out, and I had failed to initialize a variable. It happens all the time. And then back into it. Uh, uh, incomplete code, write some more, tile. Okay, now we need to have the tile, and the tile... It's sort of funny. I'll talk about it in a minute. But uh, uh, so I have the, not the real tile, just a tile model because that's what's going on here. This is all about getting the intertile connections to talk to each other, and uh, uh, you know, I I suspect I don't really know, but it's possible that this little spike, this little attempt, just to get the sequencing working, might ultimately grow up and eat. MFM T2, which is the whole giant code base that's directly based on MFMS, because MFMS has a whole, all of those assumptions, like <clears throat> the tiles will always be there once they're set up, and the tiles are all, are all running the same laws of physics guaranteed, and so forth, that are not true in the actual tiles. So it may be that I call this tile model to distinguish it from the real tile code in the MFMS code base, but it's possible that with a few more spikes, a few more developments, a few more weeks after the wall of science, comes down that this little thing that we're looking at right here may end up growing up into the new MFMT2, uh, so a fresh start where we then just pull in individual little pieces, load the Ulam code, do an event and so forth, and put it into this thing. We'll see. Uh, um, and then incomplete code and so forth. So this went on for uh, a day or two, uh, whatever it was. And oh, there we go. Uh, um, and oh yeah. And then eventually we get to a point where it, it didn't fail. <laughs> it's very distressing. Uh, uh, now it's it's in a loop, doing some updates that I partly had written and so forth. And which means now I need to have more what in my mind I want to happen, uh, because I've implemented all of the semantics, all of the behavior that I was going for to begin with. I, there's no more places to put in incomplete code. I need more idea. Now it's incomplete thinking. So I go back to channel sim. I go back to the Perl code. This is a whole different language. And I say, okay, well, what else did it do that my guy isn't doing? Well, we're waiting to hear that they're here. So here's a whole other stage that I can now go back and implement, and put failed codes in there again. And okay, great. Now we're failing. <laughs> <laughs> the incomplete code again and off we go to the races. We go all the way through this and uh, more failures and so forth and, you know, writing to the log file. Oh, and this was an exciting thing, right? Uh, uh, the first time my little on the tile thing detected an incompatible MFZ uh, uh, because, you know, there's no way to do that with a loopback cable because <laughs> the loopback cable says, I'm running MFC2. Hey, I'm running MFC2 too because he's talking to himself. So, the first time I got incompatible MFZ, that was I actually had two separate tiles that were running with separate serial cables, and I was looking at the log files of both of them, and I finally got it. And here it is. And so I obeyed my rule, which is don't waste time doing uh, graphics and all that stuff, because it's an incredible time sink, and just focus on the behavior. I got this far. <sighs> had a T Tuesday update coming, not that far away. I went back and I started to graphics code for it. So I went to the T2Viz guy, you know, the one that displays all the statistics and stuff, and I started stealing code out of that to do a viz. Uh, uh, it's very rough, but let's try uh, uh, a demo. Uh, okay, so here we are. Uh, so if I've done this right, um, we've got... Uh, three tiles here uh, that, and they've all been changed now so that they boot up into ITC Spike 11 instead of booting up into MFMS. And so they're not actually prepared to talk to an MFMS tile. If I plug in another random MFMS tile that I haven't done this with, everything gets all messed up because they're sending packets to each other over channels that they don't understand yet. But, uh, um, as long as they're only talking to themselves, uh, then things go fairly all right. And I don't know uh, how the display is going to come out. You know, there's a, there's a general issue that I've got here. I mean, these are very cheap 
uh, LCDs uh, that I'm using for these things. And furthermore, it turns out there's actually, I bought them in a couple of different batches, and the batches aren't quite the same, which... Uh, uh, all right, but here we're coming up. Okay, so we boot into T2, we get our splash screen, uh, um, and then they're going to boot into this uh, ITC Spike 11, uh, um, which is basically just going to be displaying the status of the connections, uh, the ITC connectors. So red means I'm hearing from them, but they're not talking sense. Blue means I'm hearing from them, but we are incompatible with them. Uh, uh, gray means I'm not hearing from them at all and that's what we've got here so this guy is currently running mfc zero physics this is running mfc2 this is running what mfc3 uh, uh, so they're all running incompatible physics so they're blue and red between each other but the sooner I, I made my tiles change what they're running quite frequently zero three two all right two <laughs> yeah quite frequently uh, uh what do we got here uh, um two and two uh, no uh, there we go yeah so now this tile is green it says we have gotten far enough to compute that uh, both tiles are running the same laws of physics we can open up the gate and start letting events go now these two guys are running the same one now in reality these tiles would not be changing the you know it's as if you quit one simulation and started a completely different simulation you were doing bond stuff and then you quit it and started doing dragon res stuff like that so it would have completely different meaning and it wouldn't make much sense to start saying events I'm sending you an atom of type whatever and they say well types only make sense in the context of a given simulation a given MFZ so uh, the, these guys are green because they're both talking MFZ one there we go everybody's talking MFZ one so <laughs> <laughs> three tiles and so forth so this is working pretty well uh, um, now of course one thing we can do is we can you know use a loop back um, because one nice thing that we'll know about that is that just like we said before with the loopback cable can I get this in here uh, uh, there we go so it's red I hear them talking but they haven't spoken pro there we go and now it's green so these guys east and west should basically always be green sometimes they'll drop back to blue for a second when their uh, physics is changing before they've notified each other of it but then they're coming back up so this guy's running MFZ zero and you know it all works we can <coughs> we can hot plug uh, other guys in there. I don't know if we're going to sit here long enough to wait for them to come up because it still takes a minute for them to come up. Uh, um, but that's where we're at. <clears throat> so right now there's, uh, um, you know, this this is still you know rickety. It's not as it's not as snappy as I would like it to be because there are these trade-offs between spamming and sending tons and tons of packets saying, "Are you there? Are you there? Are you there?" versus backing off. And I probably can't read this, but uh, each of the ITCs once they uh, sent a packet and haven't gotten a response, they wait longer before trying again uh, to avoid spamming it. But that slows down the response when things may have actually changed underneath. So so all of this exercise over the last two weeks, what it really did for me is it changed my perspective from thinking, you know, it's all about the tiles uh, uh, and the tiles are the most important thing to now really the important thing is the inner tile connectors because they're the ones that have to do all the work. You know, the tiles are, the tiles, you know, the tiles don't look at the inner tile connectors in this. The tiles just do whatever they want. They're the complete prima donnas. They can crash, they can reboot, they can change whatever they're doing anytime they like. And it's up to the code that's talking to the other intertile connector codes for them to figure it out, to notice the tile has changed what it's doing and go back to a level, renegotiate with the neighbors and so forth. So really, it's the ITCs are the heroes of the story, at least this week. Uh, um, because they're the ones that have to keep on going no matter what. There, there may be no events happening as far as Ulam and Splat is concerned, as far as the artificial chemistry. There might be a hard wall here, nothing to see. But the inner tile connectors are down there ceaselessly checking, what are you running, what are you running, what, you're at level what, you're at level one, stage two, I'm at level one, stage two, let's move on, and so forth. So... 
uh, and that's and this guy came up and and the ITCs the hardest working <laughs> bits of code and the thing uh, took care of it. So that's the story. Um, there's only three weeks until the wall of science comes down. There's probably going to be a week extension, so it might be four weeks. Uh, but uh, have to really move hard on the bonds. I'm not sure how much intertile sequencing stuff I'm going to be able to do in the coming week. I'm not going to put myself on the hook too much for that. Got a bunch of other things that I haven't talked about that are coming along that hopefully I'll be able to talk some of them next week as well. We'll wait for next week and find out. See you next week.